Hello, hello Libra. Welcome to your March 2020 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Libra. And before we get started, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing if you would like more content from me. And I do have a lot of good stuff coming up in the coming weeks. So make sure you're signed up for my newsletter so you can get the first dibs, best prices, all of the updates. You can go to onyxhealing.com if you would like to work with me one-on-one -on -one or sign up for my newsletter and check out the rest of my work. I know a lot of you work with me and I do regular cold psychic readings if you don't know that. So without further ado, I am going to lay this out and then we will get started. All right, let's go ahead and start with your oracle cards. So the first thing coming up is armadillo. Uh, the main thing is protection, maybe a little bit of being on the dis defensive or being on the proactive side of things. Defenses are not inherently bad. It's more about how are they being implemented? How are you using them? Are they destructive? Are they supportive? What is really going on with them? So there's just a lot of protection and armor that is uh, coming off of this card. So if it's something that's like preventing you from connection or is throwing a wrench into relationships or isn't allowing you to access the full vibrance of your being, you know, those are things that aren't helpful if it's if it's so extreme that it's like you're holding yourself back. But on the other hand, it might just be that you're extra prepared, you're taking extra precautions this month, you might be uh, really getting organized and implementing more structures. So the other thing is that there's some divine masculine coming off of this card, and the divine masculine within yourself is what allows you to be accountable. It's what allows you to get things done and make things happen. That is the energy coming off of this card. Then we have green. So there's in part going back into nature, if you will. But the way that I mean that is more about the natural rhythm of you. For some of you, this is going to apply more directly to getting out in nature, if that is your happy place, if that's your style. Otherwise, this is about thinking about the natural rhythms of you and your body and how you can get back into that. And then we have expansion. More of your higher self is calling for your expression. Your capacity is growing. The horizon beckons. This is also why the armadillo might be highlighting some stuff that's holding you back and that's preventing you from expanding. So just consider that you're going to have to self-evaluate and decide for yourself what's really going on there. The central energy for you is the chariot. Fast pace, forward movement, lots of progress, and the crossing energy is the four of wands. So needing to keep yourself comfortable as you do it as much as possible. It's kind of like the idea of I am going to expand and get uncomfortable even if I'm growing or doing new things or, or trying to break through my upper limit. That's something that always causes some form of discomfort. That's why they call them growing pains. But it doesn't mean you can't soften the landing. It doesn't mean you can't be as comfortable as you possibly can in that process. It doesn't mean you should ignore your quality of life throughout that. So those are all things that you want to consider. Just because things are moving quickly doesn't mean you don't take time for yourself to recharge and things of that nature. Also, Pay close attention to your environment because that is going to have an extra large impact on how you feel this month. That's the other thing that's really standing out, especially with the green card right here. The Four of Wands and this is just really showing up to me as you want to check in with your environment. If there's adjustments you need to make, you need to do that this month. 
What you have shifting out is the page of pentacles. So there may have been an initiation that has passed. This is like you showing up for that new project, that new idea, that new thing, that new seed that you've planted. And so the things are really moving forward full steam ahead, but the initiation of it has already passed. So I'm not getting that March is really a month of starting things. I mean, we'll see what the rest of the reading shows, but th this is more about building momentum and checking in with anything that might be holding you back as you expand into this. And then we have in the oncoming energy, the nine of swords. Okay, so this is what I was talking about with growing pains. Fear in itself is a natural part of being human. Right? So the, the fear that exists here is something that only exists within your mind. That's what I love so much about the Nine of Swords. It's probably one of my favorite Swords cards. Because it's a reminder that our, our mind, our brain is actually what can cause suffering more so than anything else. It's about the, the fear that you're brushing up against, the edge that you're brushing up against, the resistance that you might be feeling to doing that scary thing or expanding into what you know is best for you. The Nine of Swords is just highlighting that all of that exists within the mind. The worst case scenarios, they exist within the mind. And it's kind of like sometimes risk is worth it in order to get to the other side. And so you want to see this through. You don't want to just buy into the fear and, and clam up and roll into a ball and ignore everything. You want to actually push through, like see it through. Is the worst case scenario actually true? Or is it something you've just really built up in your mind? And then once you're able to challenge that, that's where the breakthrough happens. So the breakthrough is what's on the horizon. As you challenge that nine of swords, that's where you get the positive data, the positive feedback that life is not just an endless stream of worst case scenarios. The outward manifestation is the empress. Being gentle with yourself, being very nurturing to yourself. This is not a time to, well, it's never a time to bully yourself, of course. But I think especially now as you're expanding, you want to be extra sensitive to the fact that you might be really nervous. You might be working through a lot. You might be challenging yourself in a lot of ways. And the more you can just allow yourself to take care of yourself and nurture yourself through that, the easier it's going to be. And the outward manifestation is you actually taking action on those things, right? It can't remain a concept. It has to be something that you, you take action on. In the subconscious, we have the Three of Cups. I'm going to clarify this. Ace of Swords. Okay, this to me is looking like support. However you're thinking about it, like what the, the Ace of Swords is all about, the, the mental body, how you're perceiving it, how you're thinking it. And the Three of Cups is about like friendship, celebration, enjoying yourself. Because this is in the subconscious, I'm getting that this is how you are receiving support from the outside world because that is having an impact on the, on the subconscious in March. So you want to do an audit of that. I would be really, really careful with the media that you're consuming in March right? Are you addicted to watching things that are stressful and chaotic and make you feel like crap or make you feel like the world is going to hell? You need to pry yourself away from those things because they do become an addiction and then your lens is going to be shaped by that. And so you want to do an audit of what am I surrounding myself with? What type of people am I surrounding myself with? And how is that impacting the way that I'm perceiving the world and my subconscious? Because it, all of that is going to shape your lens. And the more that you can kind of sift through, this is what makes me feel good. This is what makes me feel empowered. And then this is what makes me feel as though I'm I, all hope is lost go through that because, and I tell everyone this, it's like we need you to be on your A game, right? We need you 
as a human being, as a part of the collective, to be feeling your absolute best. And as soon as something isn't helping you get into that your best self place, it, it's actually harming the collective, not just you. So you want to be very, very conscientious of this because you have a lot of power over it. It's like you can get so much support. I'm just getting that you do want to pay attention to the external things that are having an impact on the subconscious. The advice for you is the three of swords. So letting go of something. There's an element here that isn't working. It's simply holding you back. Maybe it's a person, maybe it's a job, maybe it's a, a thing that you keep doing. It could just be a behavior. But let's see, I'm going to clarify this to get more context on it. <laughs> wow, okay. Three of Swords again. I think this is telling me at least to tell you that you already know what it is. It's like, what is simply not serving you, what isn't helping you, what isn't having an impact on you in, in the right ways. And those are the things that you want to audit, cut, and release. Out, like, get that out of your life. And the more you do that, I'm just getting the more success you're going to have, the more pleasure you're going to experience, the easier these things are going to become, and the more you're going to be able to elevate into that next level and expand into the best version of yourself. The external influences, we have the high priestess. Now we're getting into more of the intuitive work. I think in terms of you actually showing up for the things that are important to you, uh, th that's actually locked and loaded. Like I'm, I'm getting that with the chariot in the center of the reading, it's like you're, you're on a hot streak with all of that. You've got things in the oven. You know, you have irons in the fire. None, none of that is missing from this reading. I'm getting that it, it already looks like a full month. It's just about how you're navigating March. It's how you're navigating the expansion that really matters. And the High Priestess is giving you the opportunity to tap into what you know to be true. This is a quiet card. This is a contemplation card. And I'm getting that if you want to understand more of what you're creating in your environment, what's happening in your environment, why things are the way that they are, you have to get quiet. So this is just a reminder tap into your intuition. We all have it. So it's time to get quiet enough to hear it. That way you can support your expansion and get into true rhythm and flow with yourself. Hopes and fears. We have the Ten of Swords, fear of losing it all. This is totally, totally normal. And I'm getting that with the Ten of Swords, it's kind of like, th this is really extreme, right? It's kind of like the tower energy of everything falling apart. And 99% of the time, that's not actually what's happening. It's just that the catastrophic thinking, the, oh my God, this isn't going to work. Oh my God, I'm going to lose everything. This is going to be a never-ending cycle of worst case scenarios. I need to plan for every possible disaster. You know, that that's kind of what your brain is designed to do. And so again, getting into your rhythm, getting into your intuition, knowing that you're going to come up against fear in March, especially if you're expanding into doing something um, that you feel really called to do or that you've been working on a project or you're stepping into that next level. Fear is normal. It's it's okay if you have an experience of, oh, this is really uncomfortable. I'm scared I'm going to lose it. And the, the goal is just to get back into the space that feels good. That's kind of the remedy to this. So I'm getting that the Ten of Swords is obviously the fear card, but I think you're trying to lessen hopes not being fulfilled by anticipating bad things. And so this is a call to expect good things, expect success, expect your ideal situation, get into aligned expectation and detach from the outcome and then you'll see yourself expand. And then the outcome of the month, the emperor, you've got it. You've got it. This is divine masculine, very similar to what I was reading here. Accountability, protection, integrity, honesty, all of that is really coming up and I'm getting that, you know, th this does not 
it it doesn't look like a rough month by any stretch of the imagination because a lot of these things are uh, is simply impacting your mental body, your mental and emotional bodies. So the emperor is just showing you you're coming out on the other side of that. And that's what you can anticipate. That's what you can look forward to. And that's, that's it. Like this, this is what you should set your sights on rather than every possible thing that could go wrong. It just seems like that's really not helping you this month. And if you have aligned confidence with what you're getting done, you're, you're not going to go wrong. It's like be confident in your own abilities. And then the first quarter of March, we have five of feathers. We have another armadillo. Strategy, resilience. It's like you have the data for success. You've already had times and spaces when you've been in a really good position and so this is like showing you that struggle is temporary. The Five of Feathers is also about getting out of conflict or getting out of an uncomfortable situation. So there is definitely some liberation coming off of here. You can, you can really count on that because I get, for me at least, any Five of Swords or Five of Feathers is a signal of an end of discomfort. It's like you're able to walk away from it finally. Card number two, or quarter two, we have four of crystals, control, and security. So this is actually showing me that there may have been some comfort in chaos, or there may have been some comfort in self-doubt, or whatever negative emotion or perception has been holding you back. This is where there's a little bit of, I'm a fish out of water if I don't have that with me. And you're learning new ways of implementing the things that are going to empower you and make you feel confident in what you're pursuing. Card number th quarter three, we have the high priestess again, intuition, sacred knowledge. You already have the wisdom. You already have the answers. You always have access to that. It's not something that is a mystery or outside of yourself, the, it, it once again is saying you need to get quiet in order to hear it. Meditation, working out, going and walking in nature, all of those things will get you quiet. So I would recommend, especially in this third quarter, it's like if you're feeling flustered or uncertain, lean into getting quiet and listening to your intuition. Fourth quarter, wrapping up the month of March. Nine of Acorns, action, drive, there you go. So now you are kind of pushing through, getting to the other side of things. Again, we have a final push of divine masculine, like getting you through it. And so there's, there's a nice blend of listening to your desires, listening to your heart, listening to your intuition, and then taking action. It's like, that, that's the whole process of everything, right? You confront the limitations, you get into your intuitive guided action, and then you do the damn thing. And that is what will put you in bigger and better positions moving forward. All right, let's do a three card pick. You're welcome to pick a card that's calling to you, ask a question, ask for guidance, whatever you need. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Card number one, we have the Two of Cups. Don't be afraid to ask for help or support. That's the main thing coming through here. It could be family, it could be a partner, it could be a friend, it could be a practitioner. I know a lot of you work with me. So whatever the case, it's like wherever you get support from, lean into that with this situation. There's no reason for you to have to do things alone with whatever you're looking to get. Like, we're, we're always in the pursuit of attaining something, right? That's kind of the excitement of life. So for you, it's just like, don't underestimate the power of support and connection. It's something you should use. That's what this card is reminding you of. Card number two, we have justice. Clarity of mind. So it's like getting, getting really neutral and questioning any inflamed thoughts. 
if you find yourself getting into something that's super, super emotional, um, uh, unless you're processing the emotions and it's something that makes sense, like grief or loss or some type of discomfort or doing inner child work, if it's not you emotionally processing, I would really be skeptical of it because usually if it's a really intense emotional thought, it's having an overactive mental body. That's really all it is. Card number three, we have the four of swords. Don't be afraid to take time for yourself. This is also an indication to slow down enough to hear your intuition. And there's a little reference to the third eye in this card. I, I, I like that because it marries intuition and stillness, which is what we all want to get into, right? So that that is the secret to getting the answer or getting the clarity it's like you have to rest get quiet and then you're gonna see what you need to do next thank you so much for hanging out with me today everybody i really really appreciate you more than you could possibly know and i do as i said in the beginning have a lot of exciting stuff coming up i have a manifestation class that's coming out i have just so many things in the works so make sure you follow me on instagram at onyx healing and sign up for my newsletter to get the best prices stay up to date the best time slots for all of the stuff that i have coming and until next time have a beautiful beautiful march everybody i am sending you so much love if you need to submit a prayer request you are more than welcome to do so at onyxhealing.com all of the links for everything is in the description box below as well as the, a list of all of the decks that I've used today. So you're welcome to check that out if you liked any of the decks that I've used. And I will see you all next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.